are you doing in my swamp? Hello everybody, this is Overboy and I'm going to be doing my ranking for all the movies of Walt Disney Studios' Silver Era. So these are the movies from 1950 to 1967 and there's eight of them all together and everything. And these are the movies that, uh, that came out and kind of revived Disney after the wartime era had kind of taken them away from doing golden, uh, their golden age and stuff. Bam, uh, Bambi was our last regular movie for about eight years and stuff and everything. So, uh, but yeah, and it started with Cinderella and goes all the way up to The Jungle Book, which is the last movie that Walt Disney was making when he died. Um, so, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get going. Coming in at number eight is... Sleeping Beauty. This has never been one of my favorite Disney movies. Even as a kid, it was one that I just... I very rarely watched. I, I never really got into it like I did some of the other Disney movies. And it's my least favorite princess movie. Aurora is only in the movie for about maybe 15 minutes or so. And everything. It's called Sleeping Beauty. But it's more about the, the fairies and Maleficent and stuff like that. It's not really about Sleeping Beauty herself and everything. I will say that Maleficent is one of the best Disney villains though. And the animation, this is really gorgeous. It had a new style of animation and stuff. And it looks really gorgeous and it holds up really well as far as that goes. And it has some good music in here too. The the uh, Once Upon a Dream song is really, really beautiful and a really great Disney love song and everything. So I, I know that this, this movie isn't one of my most favorites, but I do understand why a lot of other people like it a lot more than I do. And I do see why people consider it to be one of Disney's classics and stuff, because it is a really beautiful animated movie and stuff. And just because it's number eight doesn't mean I think it's necessarily bad, because I actually do think it's a pretty good movie. It just isn't one of my favorites. It never has been and everything. It's not, but I don't think it's one of the worst Disney movies by any means either. There are way worse movies than this one, but this one just is my least favorite from this era. So, Sleeping Beauty is number 8, and number 7 is The Sword in the Stone. This is another one that I, this one I actually did watch more than Sleeping Beauty as a kid, but it was never one of my most favorites either. Um, it has quite a few fun moments. I enjoyed it a lot more as a kid, um, especially the stuff with Arthur and, and Merlin when they go on their adventures and they turn into squirrels and fish and all that fun stuff, I, I really ate that stuff up as a kid. It, as an adult, it just it's not as entertaining and as much as I was hoping it would be. And it kind of feels like the cliff, the ending kind of left off on a cliffhanger that we never got resolved. This movie never got a sequel, and I always kind of wish it, it would have. Um, it's one of the rare Disney movies where I do feel like it could have benefited from having a sequel. I would have loved to see Arthur grow up and become a king and stuff uh, and everything. I felt like they just only to told a part of the story here and everything um but i do enjoy this movie quite a bit i think merlin is a really lovable character and i really like arthur and stuff too and just his relationship with merlin and everything i thought was really well done and everything in the, the the wizard battle with merlin and mad madam mim is really awesome and everything so there, there are things in this movie that i really enjoy and stuff and i think the animation is pretty good it's it's not the best though like out of this era i think this one has probably the worst animation um, but I think it's one of the better movies, though. Um, so, yeah, The Sword in the Stone is number seven, and number six is... Lady and the Tramp. This is just a classic Disney love story. Really a beautiful animated movie with lovable characters, and it's a really good time. I've always really enjoyed this one and everything. It's one of the those movies that I watched a lot as a kid because my grandparents loved it everything I think they were kids when it came out and so they really loved that one it was one of their favorites so it was one I watched all the time as a kid and everything and they got me into it and I really enjoyed this one I, I always liked this one and its direct video sequel I thought I think that one's kind of an underrated sequel but this this movie is pretty good it has some pretty great moments in here the spaghetti scene is just one of those classic romantic movie scenes that gets added up there with some of the most popular live action ones like like a lot of people say that scene is one of the most iconic love scenes in any movie not 
whether animated or not and everything and it's just the the Bella Note song is beautiful and everything and it has a lot of other fun moments in here the the whole scene when they're in the zoo and stuff and they go to see the beaver and stuff and all that stuff it's just a lot of fun and everything a lot of great moments and stuff and beautiful animation as you would always expect from Disney and everything so this is another one that I feel like was just another hit out of the park like this era has some of their best movies and everything and this one is I wouldn't say one of my most favorites or anything but it's definitely one that I always enjoy watching I never really have gotten tired of it it's one that I just think is a really good movie and everything not one of my very most favorites but not one of my least favorites either it's kind of somewhere maybe in the middle of overall on Disney stuff but it's one that I've always really liked and everything so Lady and the Tramp is number six and number five is 101 Dalmatians now this was one of those movies that had a live-action remake when I was a child and everything and all of my friends loved the live-action version and always wanted to watch the live-action one and I never understood why like this movie is so much better than it in every way it's got gorgeous animation and not to mention it was a technical achievement because it had to have taken a lot to be able to do all that have all those puppies in one scene and everything it it, it, it took a lot to make this movie and everything and it, it's just a really gorgeous movie and the story is really really well told and the characters are lovable and stuff I love the whole scene of them watching the TV together and everything and then uh, Cruella de Vil is one of the absolute best Disney villain she's just psychotic and crazy as hell and everything I just absolutely love Cruella I think she's a really really great villain and everything I mean she's one of those villains that you love to hate because she's psychotic and you kind of love her because of how crazy she is but you also kind of hate her because she wants to kill a bunch of freaking puppies and everything she and she's just crazy and I, 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 I miss villains like that that are that are just simply evil because they can be and stuff and she's just evil because she wants a fur coat and everything which is just crazy and and everything and I, I have always loved the character of Cruella de Vil whether it's in this movie the Glenn Close or the Emma Stone version I think that all the versions have been really great but this version in particular I just love it I love like how she freaks out when they tell her she can't have the dogs and he calls them imbeciles and idiots and everything and the song her villain song the Cruella de Vil song that Roger sings in the movie is just one of the best Disney villain songs ever and it's also a really great diss track to Cruella but it's a really really great movie and I, I love this one and it's mostly because the villain and stuff and there's a lot of fun hijinks with Hor Horace and Jasper that I felt like the live action version just couldn't quite recapture and stuff that the fun slapstickness of the the animated version just didn't translate to the live action as well as it did in as well and stuff and I feel like this movie is is just way better than the original than the remake and everything it's a really great movie and it's one that doesn't get talked about as much as it should and everything I know a lot of people that did like this one when I was a kid but you never really hear people talk about it as much anymore but they don't talk about most movies from this era because people from my generation and younger they they tend to lean towards the 90s and early 2000s Disney movies and stuff but this one is one that I've always felt was a really great movie and everything so 101 Dalmatians is number five and number four is Cinderella this is the movie that got them back on track and it was the return to the fairy tale story and stuff that Walt Disney had done with Snow White and everything it was a return to form for Disney and I gotta say this was a classic movie yeah I've always loved Cinderella it's been one of my favorites ever since I was a kid she's one of my favorite Disney princesses and everything and out of the ones pre Renaissance era she is definitely my favorite and everything uh, I just absolutely love Cinderella she's a lovable character and everything she's got a heart of gold and just you can't help but love her and everything and when she finally gets her happy ending and stuff it feels satisfying and stuff I mean yeah they're romance wasn't written the best and everything they know each other after one night and we don't really get to see their relationship build or anything but the way the movie plays out you, you feel happy for her by the time it the movie ends and stuff and, and her little animal sidekicks are so lovable and great that the, the mice and stuff especially Gus Gus he's just absolutely adorable 
and it, everything the music in here is pretty good too the dream is where your heart makes a beautiful song and everything so this is love is a great song bibbity body bobbity boo is catchy and it's just a really really fun classic fairy tale movie so um, Cinderella is number four and number three is Alice in Wonderland. Now, I really love this movie. I think it's a really, really great movie. The, the animation is just absolutely gorgeous and holds up really, really well. The movie came out 74 years ago and it still looks gorgeous. The, the characters are really lovable. And I've always just absolutely loved this movie. I, I think that it's got a really great story, wonderful characters, and it's not like a strong plotted story or anything. It's more of an episodic story. She just goes from crazy situation to crazy situation meeting all these weird and quirky characters and stuff and everything and it all turns out that it was just a, a dream and everything and when you watch the movie and you realize it's a dream and stuff and you go back and rewatch it you're like yeah you can see how this movie is a dream and stuff because this stuff is really weird and I've had all kinds of weird dreams like this before so I, I kinda I think anybody who's had weird dreams can can relate and everything but this is just a really fun time and Catherine Beaumont who does the voice of Alice is just absolutely perfect in here and this this movie doesn't have as many great songs as uh, some of the other Disney movies from this era and stuff but it, it what it lacks in songs I think it makes up with its storytelling and its funness and weirdness and quirkiness and stuff but it does have some fun moments and stuff like like the, the Tweedledee and Tweedledum telling the story of the Little Oyster is one of my favorite segments of the movie and her trying to get out of the house when she grows real tall and stuff and they're trying to get her out and everything and the rabbit thinks she's a monster and stuff and all the weird quirky situations she gets into. The stuff with the Mad Hatter and the Cheshire Cat and the Queen of Hearts and everything. Just so much fun stuff with really weird quirky characters and stuff and just, I love this movie and everything. It's 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 a lot of fun. So Alice in Wonderland is number three, and number two is Peter Pan. This was one of my favorite movies growing up. I've always just been a big fan of the story of Peter Pan and everything. I love like different versions of it. My favorite, I, I used to say my favorite was the live action version from two thousand three and everything, but. Looking back now and stuff, I think this might be my favorite version. I just love this movie. The animation is just absolutely gorgeous. It has some really great songs in there like Second Start of the Ride and um, Yo-Ho, Pirate's Life for Me and the Elegant Captain Hook and, uh, and everything. So it has some really great songs, Your Mother and Mine, and really great moments and stuff. The fights between Captain Hook and Peter Pan are a lot of fun. The way... Peter Pan just runs his mouth to Captain Hook like he's Peter Parker, just and stuff. The way it's just a lot of fun and everything. Bobby Driscoll does a really great job bringing Peter Pan to life and everything. And Wendy, Wendy's voiced by Catherine Beaumont, who also did the voice of Alice in Alice in Wonderland, and she's great and everything. And uh, I just really enjoy this, and I like that they got uh, uh, uh. Hans Conry to do the voice of both Captain Hook and Mr. Darling like in the play because the play always had the same actor playing the characters and stuff and I always thought that was kind of cool and stuff and I just really enjoyed this movie I, I think Peter Pan is a really really great animated movie and everything and it's always been one of my favorite movies ever since I was a kid I, I went through a huge Peter Pan phase and everything mainly because the sequel Hood came out when I was a kid too and everything and this one and the sequel, Return to Neverland, were two of my favorite movies growing up and everything. But this is easily one of the best movies of this era. And it's almost, it, it gives my number one a run for its money. But there's no way that it would beat my number one spot. But I really love Peter Pan. And it's one of my favorite Disney movies of all time for sure. So it's number two. But my number one favorite movie from Disney Animation Studios during their Silver Age is... The Jungle Book. Now, this is hands down my favorite Disney movie of all time. I've always just absolutely loved this movie. The songs in here are just absolutely great. My favorite Disney song of all time is in this movie with The Bare Necessities. Blue is probably my favorite Disney character of all time. It's not like Mickey or Donald or Goofy or any of them. Like, just out of, like, movie characters in general. Um, Blue is my favorite. I love Mowgli. 
I love Shere Khan is a great villain. Bagheera is a great character. I like King Louie. All of the, those characters are great. The songs, aside from Bare Necessities, every song in this movie is great. I love every single one of them. Um, and it's one of those movies that I watched so much as a kid that I, I have it ingrained in my memory almost. <laughs> and everything is just one of my favorite animated movies of all time. And it's easily my favorite Disney movie of all time. Like, not just in of uh, Disney Animation Studios, but possibly of just Disney in general. Like, not counting Pixar and stuff, but like just one that's from the Disney brand um, and stuff. I would say this is probably my favorite Disney movie of all time and everything. I just absolutely love this movie. It's kind of like uh, Alice in Wonderland. It's kind of an episodic story and everything. It doesn't have like a full thorough plot and stuff. He kind of gets into random situations till it gets to the end and he meets up with Shere Khan and stuff. But I, I love that. I love the simplistic storytelling and the, just the animation, the songs, and the characters. And it's just always been one of my favorite movies. And I always loved going to the zoo because of this. This movie and The Lion King always made me love going to the zoo because I would go to the zoo and see the the animals from these movies and stuff. And I always enjoy that too. Like wanting to look up the specific animals that are in the movie so that I could try to see them at the zoo. Everything also same with Finding Nemo as far as going to the aquarium at the zoo, but I, I love this movie and uh, Jungle Book is just an absolute masterpiece and it's it's easily my favorite movie of the Silver Era, and it's also one of my favorite Disney movies ever made and one of my favorite movies in general. I just absolutely love this movie, so the Jungle Book is number one. So anyway, let me know in the comments what your favorite Disney Animation Studios movie is. And I hope you enjoy this video, and have a good day, everybody.